Stay tuned to learn exactly what you need to write in a Chinese resume or CV. Every day, easy Chinese. 大家好，我是 Everyday Easy Chinese 的林老师 ，and today you'll learn exactly what you need to write in a Chinese resume, and also how a Chinese resume can differ from a resume that you are familiar with in your country. We also have included a free downloadable Chinese resume template in the description box below, so make sure to click the link down there, and please do give us a like. Like if you'd like us to dive more in depth on how to write a Chinese resume. One thing to note is that whereas Western resumes can often appear to be colorful and creative, resumes in China often look quite standardized. So they look something like this, and that's because employers can then assess the suitability and also skills of each candidate on a more of a like. For like basis, so let's go through each section that you need in a Chinese resume one by one. The first section that we have is the personal information section. The 个人信息个人信息 means personal information. So one thing that you need to include here is a photo of yourself. So make sure that this photo looks formal and professional. Often in China, when you get your photo taken, they will also offer a beauty retouching service as well, and this makes you look more aesthetically pleasing. So don't be surprised if your photo turns out a bit different afterwards. It's very common. So aside from a professional-looking photo, you also need to have the 姓名姓名 So your full name, then, 性别性别 means gender. So if you identify as a male, you can put 男 and if you identify as a female, you can put 女 And then the next thing that we have is the 出生年月出生年月 means the month and year that you were born in. So in China, we do things from Large to small. So this means that you put the year first. So say if you were born in the year two thousand, you put two thousand dot, and then you put the month. So if you were born in December, you put twelve as well. Next, we have the 身份证号码身份证号码 is the identification number. So if you are in China and you have an ID number, you can write this down. If you don't have one, you can also put down your passport number, which is your 护照号码 After this, we have the 国籍 nationality. Another part that we'll need is the 婚姻状况 This is the marital status. So you can either have two options here. You can have 已婚 which means married, or 未婚 which means unmarried. After this. We have the 健康状况健康状况 means your health status. So they want to check that you are healthy and in shape to work. So possible answers here can be 健康 healthy, or you can also say 良好 which means good. Now after this, we have the height. So this is 身高身高 So we deal with centimeters in China. So if you are 178 centimeters, you can put 178 cm. Next after this, we have the 学位学位 means education level. So you put down your highest level of education here. So common answers here are 学士 which means a bachelor's degree, 硕士 Which means a master's degree, and if you completed a doctorate or PhD degree, then you'd put 博士 here to signal that. After this, we have the 通讯地址通讯地址 means your mailing address in case they have to send anything there. And then we have the 
邮箱，邮箱 means your email address, and then also don't forget to include your 联系电话。联系电话 means your contact phone or mobile number. Now after this, we have the 语言能力。语言能力 means language ability. And I'm assuming that if you are applying for a job in China and you're watching this YouTube video now, you'll probably be bilingual and know a bit of Chinese and English or other languages as well. These are all really good assets that any company in China would value. So make sure that you put your language. And then also the level of proficiency as well. So some levels of proficiency you can have are beginner, 初级 intermediate, 中级 and finally, 高级 which means advanced. So make sure to put these down here. So I know that some of the above information you would not want to put in a Western resume, such as your gender, your age, and maybe your height. So feel free to leave these out and adapt your resume on things you are comfortable with sharing. But just to note that the employer may ask you at a later stage, maybe at an interview about whether you are married or not. So don't be surprised when you do receive these questions. So the next section we have is the 教育背景 the educational background section. So, if you are a foreigner applying for a job in China, usually anything from college or university level above is sufficient. That's unless you went to a world-renowned, globally famous middle school or high school. So, here are the four parts that you'd need to include in this section. So, the first one is the 起止年月 which means the start to end date. So make sure again that you start with the year and then go down to the month. After this, we have the 学校学校 refers to the college or university you attended. And then next after that, we have the 专业专业 means your major. So you write that down. And the last part of this section is the 学位 So for each institution that you attended, put down the level. Of education you received there, so we covered this previously. We have the 学士 bachelor's, 硕士 master's, and 博士 for a doctorate or PhD degree. So let's move on to the third section that we need. So this is the work experience section, the 工作经验 section. So over here we have three fields that you need to include. The first one again is the 起止年月 which means the start to end date. Remember, largest to smallest. And then next we have the 在何单位 which means at what organization. So you'd put down your company name here. And then the final field we have is 任何任职 which means the job position and any responsibilities that you have. In section number four, you'd put any awards that you have in here. So this is the award section, or otherwise known in Chinese as the 奖惩情况 section. So make sure that you put the year and then the month and then the name of the award. In section five, let's put down any hard skills that you have. So this is the 技能特长 section. The special skills section. So, if you do know how to do maybe some Photoshop, you're good with Adobe Premiere Pro, for example, or maybe you might even be a very proficient Microsoft Excel user. So, make sure to include these skills in this section. And in the final section, section six, we have the 自我评价 section, which is the self appraisal section. So this is similar to a personal statement section on a Western resume. However, instead of it being too business or career driven, it really is quite personal. So you put down your personal characteristics here. So maybe you might be a very passionate person, or maybe you might be a social butterfly. So you can put these things down here. You can also put down any personal experiences that you think would bring something to the role. 
For example, if you like traveling, this means that you can bring a worldly perspective to the job. So it's very valuable that you put down these personal experiences and characteristics. So that's it for today where we looked at six sections that you need to include in your Chinese resume. The first one is the personal information, 个人信息. Second is the educational background, 教育背景. The third is your work experience, 工作经验. The fourth, any awards you have in the 奖惩情况. Fifth, we have any skills that you might have, the 技能特长. And finally, we have your self-appraisal or personal statement, 自我评价. Please give us a like if you'd like to see maybe a more in-depth dive into any of these sections of a Chinese resume, or simply if you'd like to see more business-related Chinese videos. Also, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we post weekly for you. See you next time.